Hi everyone, today's screencast is going to cover stem cells. Please make sure that you've got a pen and some paper before we start. The LO for today's screencast is to understand stem cells and their uses. There is some retrieval practice on the board now. This is retrieval from earlier in the cell biology topic. So pause the screencast now and have a go at these questions. When you think you've finished the questions, have a green pen ready, preferably green, if not just a different coloured pen to mark and correct your answers. The answers are on the screen now, so pause the video again and mark your answers yourself. Okay, so moving on to stem cells now. Um, stem cells are cells that have not yet become specialised. All cells start out like this, so that all cells start out as stem cells and they can make copies of themselves and can differentiate to become different types of specialised cells. And there is another screencast on specialised cells. So cells undergo, they start off as stem cells and they undergo cell differentiation and they become specialised cells and they are specialised to perform a certain function. Some of the uses of stem cells are because they start out as stem cells and they can differentiate into different types of cells. They can actually be used in medicine as a potential treatment for lots of different diseases. Scientists can take stem cells and differentiate them into another type of cell in the lab. Um, and this means that we've got the potential to form whole organs and tissues. The treatments do come with risk though. So viral infections can be transferred and stem cells can begin to divide uncontrollably and become cancerous. But we are going to look in more detail at different types of stem cells. An example of a use for this treatment would be that a scientist could take a stem cell and differentiate it into a pancreatic cell. These can be grown um, on a support to form a whole pancreas and this can then be transplanted into a diabetic person. They could also, so this is sort of in early stages, um, they're in the process at the moment of trying to grow spinal cord tissue um, this is so that it can be transplanted into people that suffer with paralysis. Um, and it's still an area of research, so it's undergoing development, but there's been quite a lot of progress made in this area in recent years. So the first type of stem cell that we're going to look at is embryonic stem cells. A developing embryo, um, so when an egg cell is fertilised by a sperm cell, the cells will start to divide and eventually you will get an embryo formed. Um, they contain a lot of stem cells because obviously an embryo is going to grow and develop quite a lot while it's in the womb. So they contain lots of stem cells so that they can um, grow lots of different cells and their cells can differentiate into the different types of cells that an embryo will need. So embryonic stem cells or embryo stem cells, um, they have the ability to become all of the cells that you would find in the human body, including heart cells, brain cells and muscle cells. There are some more examples on this picture here. Because embryonic stem cells are what we call pluripotent, they can treat a wide range of diseases. So pluripotent means they have the ability to differentiate in, into lots of different types of cells. Their use to treat disease is a relatively new concept. So it has been going on for quite a while, um, the use of stem cells, but it is still a relatively new concept compared to other types of treatments that we do have. Embryos can actually be produced in quite a high number in lab, but it is important to note that there are quite a lot of ethical issues surrounding the use of stem cells from embryos. Developing embryos can be seen as potential life. So if that embryo was um, implanted into a womb and allowed to develop, it would develop into a baby and be born and be alive. So there are quite a few ethical issues relating to that. Um, when stem cells are actually extracted from an embryo, 
the embryo can't be asked if that's okay. We can't, the embryo can't give consent for its cells to be taken. And the actual process of extracting those cells can cause harm or even death to the embryo. So there are quite a lot of ethical issues related to the use of embryonic stem cells. The other type of stem cells that we're going to look at are what we call adult stem cells. And these are found in the bone marrow. So you can you might see them called adult stem cells. They might be called adult bone marrow stem cells, but they are the same thing. In animal cells, um, well, our cells tend to differentiate at a very early stage of development. So like we said before, as an embryo, before we're even born, we have all the different types of cells that we will need. So our cells differentiate at a very early stage in development. By the time our bodies are fully formed, cell differentiation is mostly finished. We still have some stem cells that are present in our bone marrow, but the cell division is restricted to repair and replacement rather than making new types of cells because we've already got all the new types of cells that we need. Adult stem cells can be extracted from the bone marrow and how they do this is they use a long needle. Um, this, These type of stem cells have been used to treat diseases for over 60 years so they have been used for longer than embryonic stem cells have but it is still a relatively new kind of treatment. Extraction of adult stem cells is relatively safe and you can actually ask an adult is it okay to use your stem cells? Can we extract your stem cells? So you can get consent um, from the donor for these. I have put together a slide that summarizes the advantages and disadvantages of embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells. If you want to take the time to copy down this slide, it will be useful. In your exam, you will usually be asked to compare um, the use of the different types of stem cells. So pause the video now if you want to copy this down. Um, so if we go into more detail of the uses of stem cells, there is a technique called therapeutic cloning and this produces an embryo with the same genes as a patient. So if you imagine a patient has a disease that needs treating and we're going to look at using stem cells, we can actually create an embryo that has the exact same genetics as the patient. So it's basically an embryonic clone of that patient. It's done by, and the process is laid out in this diagram here, it's done by removing the nucleus from one of the patient's cells. So for example, it could be a skin cell, which is really, really easy to extract. Um, you place the nucleus of that skin cell into an egg cell, which has had its nucleus removed. Then you can stimulate that cell to divide and it will grow into an embryo. After about four or five days, the stem cells are then removed from the embryo and they can be used to treat the patient. The benefit of this technique is that the stem cells from the embryo are not going to be rejected from the patient's body. So if you are transplanted with cells or organs or tissues from another donor that has a different genetic makeup to you, your body could recognise that as a foreign body and your immune system can attack it. So say for example if you had a liver transplant from a different person your body could see that as a foreign um, body due to the antibodies that are present on the liver and your immune system can attack it so it can actually destroy the organ that's been transplanted and obviously then it won't work so if you have um, stem cells from an embryo that has your genetic makeup there's no risk of that so you know that there's going to be no risk of rejection. Um, this method can also produce any type of cell or tissue, so it can treat a wide range of diseases. So before when we said about um, adult stem cells, they have um, lost that ability to differentiate into all the different types of cells. Their differentiation is limited to a few different types. With this method, you've got you've not only got the same DNA, as the um, stem cells, you've also got the ability to produce any type of cell because it is still coming from an embryo. The stem cells are still coming from an embryo, so they've still got that ability to differentiate into any type of cell. Some of the cells that are produced in this 
um, in therapeutic cloning, they can actually be used for research rather than for treatment. Um, so they can be used to research these treatments and for things like trials. Um, and you can actually produce tissues and organs, which mean that there's a reduced waiting time for transplants. The organ donor list or the waiting list for organ donations is very long and people do often wait a long time for transplants. So if we can actually um, engineer these organs, these tissues and organs outside of the body, then it reduces that waiting time for a transplant. It is still important to remember the ethical issues involved with the use of embryos, even though this is an embryo that's being produced solely for the purpose of um, creating genetically identical stem cells. Um, it's still an embryo, and if that embryo was implanted into a womb, it would still um, it would still develop and grow into a baby. Um, so it is still potential life that is being killed or destroyed in this process. These treatments also do have quite a poor success rate, um, so they're not always successful. Egg collection also involves risks and there is a shortage of egg donors as well. This process, as with the other um, process involved with embryonic stem cells, can also transfer viral infections. So, Again, I've summarised the advantages and disadvantages of therapeutic cloning. So you may want to copy these down if you haven't been making notes. Um, it just summarises what you need to know about um, the advantages and disadvantages of therapeutic cloning. Now what I'm going to do is pop some exam questions about stem cells on the screen. So you need to pause at each question and complete that question, move on to the next one. And then after all the questions, I'll go through the answers. So here's the first question. Here's question number two. Here's question number three. This is number four. And this question is only slightly different to the previous one, but this is number five and this is the final question. So once you finish this question, make sure you've got your green or different colored pen ready and we'll go through the answers. Okay, so please make sure that you correct your answers as we go through. If you need more time on each question, then just pause the screencast. The answers will be written on the screen. So for the first question, it says stem cells can be used to treat some diseases. What is a stem cell? Now it's two marks, so we need two points. The first point we need is that it's an undifferentiated or unspecialized cell. The second point we need is that it can differentiate, become, change into other cell types. This question is also two marks and it says that stem cells from human embryos are used to treat some diseases in humans. Explain why and it's two marks. So we need any two from these three points. So we could say stem cells are unspecialized or undifferentiated. Um, they are able to become differentiated or conform other types of cells, tissues, organs, um, or we could say um, stem cells can or are able to divide and multiply. Any two out of those three would gain you two marks. This question is a longer answer question. It says stem cells can also be obtained from human embryos. Evaluate the use of stem cells from a patient's own bone marrow instead of stem cells from an embryo. So it's asking you to compare the two and look at advantages and disadvantages. So you would need to give your answer and then a conclusion. So this part of the mark scheme here tells you the different levels of answers and what you would need to gain different numbers of mark. You would need to include in your answer advantages of both types of stem cells and also disadvantages of both types. You need at least one advantage of each and one disadvantage of each. You could also include um, advantages of both or disadvantages of both, um, but you would need a conclusion as well. So I've put an example answer here it's important that our conclusion is evidence-based. So it is our opinion, but it has to be backed up by the evidence in our answer. So if you want to copy this down, pause the screencast now. And I'll pop the answers on the screen for the final two questions. Just choose two from the list for each. <laughs> 